For me, it came from kind of a strange realization. I went to a school where um, the classes were large, uh, the teaching was more traditional. Typical lecture, where you go into the room, the professor stands in front of the room, talks at you for 50 minutes or 75, however long the class is, and that's pretty much the end of it. My experiences in undergraduate classrooms did not prepare me to ask questions, make hypotheses, read literature, synthesize ideas, all the things that I was supposed to be good at as a graduate student. The way that we're teaching and the way most undergraduates are still being taught, what they get out of their coursework in no way resembles the process of research. And it's almost antithetical to research. These are kids who got A's in our core courses and they're coming in and they don't understand that, they don't understand that genes encode proteins. They don't understand that there are two copies of every gene. I mean, they, they could probably repeat that fact back to you, but they don't really understand that. If all you're capable of is knowledge and a little bit of understanding, then you'll be most successful as a game show contestant, but you won't be able to do very much else. So it's very perplexing that we aspire to have people who graduate from a biology degree go out and become researchers, become healthcare professionals, become teachers. And all of those jobs will require those folks to be creative with the biology they know, talk with other people about it, come up with new ideas, make predictions, make decisions uh, with lack of total information. All the things we aspire for people to be good at after they graduate are not necessarily what we train them to do in our classes. Part of the problem is we're setting the bar too low. We have low expectations for our students and they need them. Right? You know, we, we talk at them and all we expect them to do, right, is to s absorb a bunch of information and repeat it back to us. And if those are our expectations, that's what our students do. We know from studies that when you memorize facts, you could do very well on an exam uh, once you've crammed for it. But if you give the same exam unannounced to the same people a year later, very little of what they memorized is known. So is that education, the fact that you were able to spit it back after cramming? I would say it's not really education unless it sticks a year later. They're going to be there four years. How much information are they going to remember when they graduate? Not a lot. But what they will remember is how to think their way out of a problem. And that's, that's I think that's, that is most of our goals as, as teachers. I mean, there's some things you have to know, don't get me wrong, but it's can you think. Right? I don't remember my teachers, a word that came out of their mouths, but I remember the ones that I liked the most because they probably changed the way I thought. What's your goal for the class? Do you want students to be able to parrot back what you've said, or could you actually go beyond that? Could you go beyond the content and ask students to predict the next experiment or predict the results of what would happen if you perturbed a system? We want them to be able to synthesize ideas, okay? That's hard to do by the Socratic method because you're doing all the synthesis. I would send them and I would say, think about it in this way when you study tonight. And it wouldn't happen because I wasn't giving them an opportunity to practice. That's how you learn. Uh, you learn through practice and trial and error. The people who do the learning in a classroom are the people who are doing the work. So in class, we should be giving our students opportunities to practice those skills answering questions, collecting data, evaluating data, separating the relevant data from the irrelevant. And they're very good at going out and finding information on their own and, and interpreting it. They're really good at it. And again, we just set the bar so low that that's never even been part of the class. When we want to hire a new teacher, we hire someone who's been in school for 25 years oftentimes with no training to teach. So that would be like saying, okay, I've been flying on the airlines for a long time. I'm ready to be a pilot. Most faculty teaching today were taught by the traditional lecture method when they were in school. And so some of them tend to argue that uh, it worked for me and it worked for my colleagues. Look around, uh, all my academic colleagues were taught this way too and look where we are, we're doing fine. 
So why should, we, why should we change? Sometimes it's been referred to as instructional selection. The people who survive in biology classes in the undergraduate years are those people who learn really well by lecture. But in reality, you know, that might be selecting against people that have phenomenal scientific thought process in their head or the capability of phenomenal thought processes in their head, but you know, they can't listen, memorize, write down, and take a test and sort of go to the next level, or they find that boring almost, dare I say, <laughs> boring when science is really not boring, right? It's, it can be so exciting. Not everyone is going to learn from a professor who stands in front of a classroom and just dictates notes, even if he's entertaining, right, and eloquent and so on. And it's not their job to figure out how to get it. It's my job to figure out how to deliver it. It's your job as an educator to motivate them and to figure out how to reach them. There's a big difference between teaching and learning. And what I had been focusing on was teaching and forgetting that the real goal is learning, student learning. It doesn't mean everyone's going to become a research scientist, but it means everyone gets the exposure necessary to uh, become a scientific thinker or become more of a scientific thinker. And if we do that, if we do that, we've really done our job. So at this point, you may be wondering, well, how can I do these things? How can I incorporate uh, active learning into my classes? Well, let's think about this. If you wanted to run a protein gel, you wouldn't start from scratch and say, wow, I need some sort of matrix, a polymer maybe, maybe electricity. You would go to the experts. You'd see what others have done. Many, many people have been working on active teaching over the years. We have some great examples. You can learn from masters. You can learn from their mistakes so you don't have to make them yourself. So we will show you some of the great ways that you can engage students without getting a PhD in education, just applying what works in your classroom to meet your goals. Mm -hmm.